Hello, this is Tim from Vintage RC Garage. Today we're going to do an unboxing of the Tamiya Frog Kit number 5841. If the word nostalgia is the first word that comes to mind when you see the frog, you probably grew up in the 80s. I never owned one. My first RC was a Hornet, but my friends in the neighborhood did. There was just something about the look. I never bought into the frog look-like theory, but it was definitely unique. The frog is a 110 scale buggy and was very popular in its time. It has a polycarbonate body shell and wing, but the chassis is where it distinguishes itself. The frog used the ORV chassis, or off-road vehicle. Yeah, I know, it's pretty inventive. But it was not the first model to use it. The frame was unique because of its design. It consisted of a two-half frame where the two frame elements were combined together and everything else attached to the frame instead of the more traditional tub-style chassis. The frog was released in December of 1983 and was last produced in 1988. It was the third with the ORV chassis after the Subaru Brat and the Lancia Rally. The frog was re-released in 2005. The reason it was so popular is that it was a great entry level buggy. There are only 22 build steps in the manual, plus another five for the painting and shell assembly. The manual is unusually thin and there's a small number of tree parts in the kit. Okay, now let's get into the box. The A parts tree contains the left and right chassis space frames. Both trees are labeled as an A tree, which is unusual because the two trees actually have different parts. Usually they would be identical if they had the same letter. It also includes the battery latch, two options for the battery holder for a 6 volt and 7.2 volt bracing pack, chassis cross mounts, speed controller spacers, and the on off switch cover. Next up is the C parts tree. It contains the left and right rear axle arms, the main gearbox, upper and lower space frame supports, the motor mount, the rear axle hubs, a number of unused parts. Next in the box is the H parts tree. It contains the front bumper mount, the left and right upper and lower front arms. The Frog has a front spring loaded oil filled shocks combined with double wishbone suspension. In the rear, however, are a pair of trailing arm oil filled shocks that are laid front to back instead of vertically. Some say this is why the frog actually looks like a frog. Now the big one, the blister pack lid. It contains the left and right upright knuckle, the RS540 motor, which is mounted in the rear, ball bearings, 15T drive gear, 16, 18, and 19 pin teeth pinned in gears, left and right large bevel gears, two ceramic resistors, two joint shafts long, two joint shafts short. Adjustable damper bag which contains the piston springs, the rear coil springs, the rear cylinders, the cylinder caps, the o-rings, damper eyes, piston rods, free pistons, and the piston diffusers. The lid also contains the damper oil, the speed controller, and the plastic gear bag. Plastic gear bag contains the differential spur gear, 49, 50, and 52T gears that go with the 19T, 18T, and 16T pinion gears. The Frog was also one of the earlier RCs to have differential gears. Most kits at that time did not come with any differential option. The last part in the lid is the metal parts bag, which is the small bevel gears, 4x6mm pipes, 28mm shafts, 5x21mm shafts, hexagonal spacer, and the ball pins. Next up are the F and R parts tree. The F parts tree has the three-piece front rims, and the R parts tree has the three-piece rear rims. Then we have the B and S tree parts. The B parts, she has eight tire bushings, suspension parts, battery clip, two differential gear bushings, and the gearbox spacer. The S parts contains the servo heads and spacers. One interesting fact about this build is it doesn't start with a radio gear like most models. The radio gear gets inserted between the chassis frames much later on in the build. Who can mistake the bumper? The early Frog had a different bumper in the first release in 1983. Starting in 1984 and on, it was a wider version. My version is not the 1983 bumper because it is wide as the re-release bumper. Press parts bag. Left and right gearbox plates, underguard, switch stay, front arm stay, suspension stay, resistor stay, glass plate, sprocket washer, front arms, and resistor plate. Many of the earlier Tamiya off-roaders were built using metal parts. The Frog was sort of a hybrid where it used some plastic parts to keep the weight down but still used some metal parts in areas that received high stress. The era of the SRB chassis was fading and plastic would become king. 
Then we get the tool bag. It contains the switch cover, joint boots, zip ties, battery pack balloon, bead bands, small and large Allen key, waterproofing system, i.e. balloon, and the grease and double-sided tape. Then we have the Iconic 2 antennas. Can't move without the tires. The thin rimmed front tires are also found on the Sand Scorcher. It also contains the infamous rear spike tires. These were covered with white residue, which is left over from the mold release process. Next up is the rod bag. It contains the front radius arms, body clips, ball joint connectors, 45, 55, and 75 millimeter rods, front coil springs, and differential wiring. Then we get into the screw bags in order. Screw bag A has three and four millimeter by 12 millimeter self tapping screws, two millimeter machine screws, two and three millimeter washers, and 10 millimeter shafts. Screw bag B contains three by 10, 15, 20, and 27 millimeter machine screws, three by eight millimeter gap screws, and three millimeter flange nuts. Bag C contains three by six millimeter machine screws, 2.6 by 10 millimeter self tapping screws, three millimeter grub screws, three by 16 millimeter spacers, and two and three millimeter nuts. Last screw bag is screw bag D. It contains three and four millimeter lock nuts, three millimeter by eight and 20 millimeter step screws, and body mounts. It's always fun looking at the body shell and wing. We have the large body shell with the rear wing was tucked inside. The paint job on the frog is not the easiest for beginners. The box art has a two-tone white PC1 with pink PC11 along the bottom of the shell. The silver and black PC5 require some skill to mark off the roll bar. Another tricky task is masking off the clear window areas. Another important part of the body shell is the Z parts tree. It contains the driver body and helmet, and it also contains the infamous spot front spotlights. The decals are rather plain. They contain either the number one or two racing numbers. The most famous is the no guts, no glory decals that go across the rear wing. Numerous sponsors such as Budweiser, NGK, KC, and Pennzoil are scattered throughout. Small images and references to frogs are shown here and there. The final item on the bottom of the box is the traditional Tamiya manual. The manual is a standard Tamiya version with monochrome print and occasional blue highlights throughout. This version does not have any Japanese, however. It only comes in English with German subtitles. So that is everything in the box. Now it's time to put it all back in. The Frog definitely proved to be a popular and well-loved buggy. It had many memorable features from the No Guts No Glory decal on the rear wing to the trailing arm suspension to the spiked rear tires shared by the Hornet and the Super Champ. Overall, it was a reliable buggy. One of its weakest parts was the metal sided closed gearbox. The plates were too thin to prevent flexing and the differential gears took the beating. Thanks for watching my unboxing of the Tamiya Frog 5841. If you have a request for my next unboxing, visit my blog collection page at vintagercgarage.com and send me a note. See you next time.